So another one of plugins that Kong API Gateway provides us in its free version is the rate limiting which is a really handy tool for maybe for example defending against DDoS attacks or web scrapping or whatever. So in this video we'll have a deep dive in using this plugin and see it in action on how to configure it in the declarative mode of Kong API Gateway deployed as a docker container. So stick with me to find out more. Hello and what's up guys, medium guy here and in this video we'll have a deep dive on how to use the rate limiting plugin of the Kong API gateway and later we'll see how to configure it to store all the rate limiting data in a Redis database so that all the nodes of the Kong API gateway would be able to use the exact same data and rate limit all the client traffic. So the description that the Wikipedia provides about the rate limiting, so as it says, Rate limiting is used to control the rate of the request sent or received by a network interface controller. It can be used to prevent the OS attacks and limit web scraping. So another fact about this research indicates flooding rates for one zombie machine are in excess of 20 HTTP GET requests per second. So that the description that the Kong official documentation says about the rate limiting is that it is how many HTTP requests can be made in a given period of seconds, minutes, hours, days or even months or years and if the underlying service has no authentication layer, the client IP will be used. So as it is saying, the plugin will be limiting according to the client's IP address and it is going to limit how many HTTP requests can be made in a given period of seconds, minutes, hours, days, months or even years. And it is going to have configurations and so we'll see it in action. So as we saw in the previous videos, I hope you've been following me along and I'll be glad if you had any questions, just ask me in the comments section. We have deployed the Kong Gateway in a Docker container and we have successfully configured a route for an echo server that we ran in a random port and also in the previous video we configured the course plugin so we can make requests to the Kong gateway and in this video we'll be configuring the rate limit plugin so let's get down to work. So if I go to my configuration file I'll hit ls so I'll hit nano config Kong YAML. In here I see that I have defined a service and I've pointed to the matching route matching IP port of the upstream server and here is the configuration of the course plugin and if you have any questions I recommend you go watch the previous videos and in this video we're going to add the configurations for the rate limit plugin. So I'll go back to the official documentations, I'll scroll down, I'll switch to the declarative tab and in here we have a simple configuration to enable the plugin on a service. So that's not what I want. I want to enable the plugin globally. So I'll scroll down and I reach the place where I have the simplest configuration for enabling the rate limiting plugin. So in order to make a request I'm going to first run my Kong gateway so in here I'll hit Control X to exit the nano and here all I need is a docker compose up. So my Kong gateway is listening on the 8000 port so if I go make a request here, I see I have successfully got my response. And if I check the response headers section of the request, there are no headers related to the rate limiting. So as it is expected, we have not configured the relevant configurations. And the next thing I'm going to copy paste the basic configuration and I'll hit control C again I'll 
nano my configuration and in here I'll paste my configuration that I just copied and I'll remove these plugins. So this is going to rate limit my requests with the maximum of five per second. So I'm going to comment this line and for the hours section, I'm going to leave 10 for now just to test the results. And again, I'm going to say Docker Compose app and if I go and refresh my page here in the response headers, I'll see that the read limit headers have been successfully added to the headers that are coming for the client in the response headers section. And in here, I see that the read limit is set to 10 because I provide 10 in the configuration. Again, if I hit refresh, in here I see that the rate limiting remaining is the number eight. So again, if I refresh, I'll see the remaining is seven. And also we have a header, which is rate limit reset, which is saying when the rate limit will be reset and the rate limit remaining header will be equal to the rate limit limit header. So if I again hit refresh, as many times so I can reach the rate limit. This time I see that the status of my response is not equal to 200 and it is 429 which stands for too many requests. So with this response I see that my rate limit plugin is working successfully and I have successfully configured the rate limit to the configuration in the DBLS mode of the Kong API gateway. So moving down in the official documentations, we have all kinds of parameters that we can pass to the rate limit plugin. So we have second, minute, hour, day, month, year. So whichever we pass to the configuration, depending on our case, depending on our resource that our, our backends, our services are up in that server. We'll try to write our configurations and moving up, we have the limit by configuration. So it is an optional configuration. And as it is saying, the entity that will be used when aggregating the limits will be the consumer credentials, IP service, header path and if the value of the entity chosen to aggregate the limit cannot be determined the system will always fall back to the IP which is now in my case so I haven't provided a limit by configuration so it is limiting my requests based on my IP address so if I change my IP uh, or maybe if I try to request from another computer Again, I'll have the 10 rate limit as I've configured in the configuration file. So moving down here, we have the policy configuration. Again, it is optional and is local by default. So it is saying the rate limiting policies to use for retrieving and incrementing the limits available values are local cluster and radius. So in local, Counters are stored locally in memory on the node, so the other nodes won't be accessing those data and it'll only be used in a single mode of the Kong deployment. And also if the Kong service gets down, restarts or stops and starts again, the data will be lost and all the rate limiting data will be reset to zero. Also, we have the cluster policy that counters are stored in a Kong data store and shared across nodes, but this policy is not available in the DBLS mode. And the next is the Redis that the counters are stored on a Redis server and shared across the nodes also. So, as I said, in the DBLS mode, the cluster config policy is not supported, but we are going to see on how to use the Redis and connect our Kong gateway to a Redis database and see it in action. 
that the data are getting stored in the Redis database. So in order to do this, we need to define the policy in our configuration file. So I'll hit Control C and try to edit my file. And in here, I'll try to add the policy config and I'll set it to Redis. And in this case, we also need to define the Redis configurations. So if we scroll down here, we have the Redis host, which is exactly the same as my host that my Kong gateway is running on. The next thing is the Redis port, which in my case is the default port. So there is no need to defining it. And the Redis username is in my case the default username. Also, I don't need to define the Redis username and the Redis password, which in my case is example. And we are set, I'll hit save. And again, I'll say Docker compose up. So my Kong gateway is up and running. So using Visual Studio code, using the Redis extension, I've successfully made a connection to my local Redis server that I'm running on my local machine. So again, in here, if I try to refresh, I'll go back to the VS code, I'll hit refresh. And in here, I'll see that the Kong gateway has made a successful connection to my Redis and a key has been added, which in the end includes the IP that the client is making the request and some other data colon hour at the end which in my case is the only configuration that i've passed to the config file so the number that is stored in here is one if i hit refresh i go back and refresh i'll see that the number has changed to two again also if i hit refresh more and more I'll see again that the API rate limit exceeded and I get the 429 response, which is too many requests. So again, if I hit refresh, I get the number. I see that the 10 has been stored in the key where my IP is stored. So that's all for this video. This is a simple way to configure the rate limit plugin of Kong Gateway in a DBLS mode and I hope you learned something new in this video. If you have any questions, I'll be checking the comment section. So please do like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.